haven't, or if you're just joining us, if you haven't met me already, my name is Tammy. I'm an instructor with KTI English Preparation Centre here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And we are trying to give you little tidbits of information to help you on your journey of learning English. We have said in the past, we know that learning English is not simple. Um, some have told us it's the hardest language to learn. I don't know. <laughs> we know this isn't a piece of cake. It's not going to be easy. We know it's not a breeze. Again, it's not easy, but we're going to do this together. You are taking, whoops, uh, my, uh, my chair hit the keyboard. Sorry, we are supposed to be here. We are <laughs> going to work together on this and you're taking the first step you are trying to educate yourself, trying to learn something new, trying to improve. So you can do this. Well, we're here to try and help. So today's topic, common pronunciation mistakes. So uh, you want to sound like a native speaker. That means you want to be more fluent, um, saying the right sounds, but also the accent too. Okay, you wanna say the sounds correctly. So again, start easy. We always have to remember to listen to English speaking as much as we can. It's easy if you're out in the workforce. If you're out working at a job where you have to listen to English speakers, it's easy. It's not so much, especially now that we're home more, <laughs> um, but if you're at home, especially as moms, home with the kids, it's not as easy. So we have to make time to listen to English. So there are some very common pronunciation mistakes that we hear from our ESL students, um, a number of them. And making this slideshow presentation, this topic for today, I realized there's a lot I want to, a lot of, a lot of things I want to help you with that we want to help you with. We can't do it all in the 30 minutes or less. I want to go 30 minutes or less. So I'm going to break it down into smaller chunks that are easier to manage, easier to practice. So a couple of things to practice today. So two, we're going to look at two. They're kind of related. I'll show you why. So big ones we hear are the unvoiced and voiced letter sounds. Mixing up, saying one sound for the other, or um, and they're the same way we make the sound, just voiced or unvoiced, or they're different sounds that we mix up. So very common ones, especially for our Arabic speakers, P and B, we mix up those two sounds. Um, also the F and the V, we mix up those. For our Spanish speakers, they mix up the V and the B. And for our East Indian speakers, our Southern Asian speakers, the W and the V, those are ones that are getting mixed up. So I'm gonna point out where they are how to say them and give you some tips on how to practice them. And then there's the consonant digraphs. Now this, this is related because this, these two letters together, these two sound, two letters together make two different sounds, voiced and unvoiced sound. Um, so we are going to look at those ones as well. They're very related. So as you know, the differences in speech sounds between languages are important. Some of your native languages don't have those sounds in them, the English sounds that these letters make. You might not be even, you're not used to physically making the sound with your mouth. So it is going to require a little bit more practice. Well, from the beginning, practice makes progress, right? We always have to work with practice, practice, I'll get better, practice. Okay, so in English, we have, we've talked in previous videos about our vowels and knowing about when to use specific words before there. And vowels are the A, E, I, O, and U, the five letters in our 26 letter alphabet that have um, different sounds and combine together to make different sounds. We've got diphthongs, a lot of different things. We have different rules, long sounds, short sounds. Today we're going to talk about the consonants. So those 21 other letters that make the different consonant sounds. Um, generally, generally they are very consistent. Um, we have voiced 
consonant sounds and these ones is when you actually use your vocal cords. So inside your throat, you're very aware of this, there's vocal cords or sometimes called vocal folds and they'll vibrate inside as you're pushing the air out of your lungs through your mouth. They vibrate and that's where we make the sounds called the voiced consonant sounds. So these are ones like b, b, the sound of b, b, b. We also have sounds like v, the sound of v, v, and the d, d sound. So when, what I often tell my young students and my older students is to tell if it's voiced or voiceless, all you have to do is hold your throat or hold the base of your throat right here. You can feel the difference. There's a vibration under your fingers for voiced sounds. So if you go v, v, you can feel the vibration, not the muscles of your neck moving, but the vibration of those vocal cords. Voiceless sounds, you're not going to feel that vibration. It's just the sound made by pushing the air out of your lungs, through your teeth, through your lips, however you're holding your mouth. So it's just using your breath. So ones like p, p, p. You, when you have your hand on the base of your neck right here at your vocal folds, when you make the p, p, p sound, you can't feel anything. You can feel the muscles move, but not the vocal folds folds vibrating, okay? Same way, you can't feel the vibration. Voiceless sound, just the air is make the air and your teeth and your lips are making the sound. We also look at consonants as continuous sounds. So you can hold that sound for as long as you can hold your breath, right? So ones like When I run out of breath, then that sound stops. It's continuous. I can keep going. V same thing. S same thing. I can hold it. Then we have the quick or short sounds. You cannot hold the sound for long. You can repeat it, say the sound over and over and over, but it's not the same as holding that sound. So, for example, we've got p. It's just, it's that burst of air out of your lips, between your teeth and your lips that are making that sound. B, B, the voiced version of that one. Same, same movement for your lips and your teeth. P, P, B, B, but your vocal folds get in for the B. And it's a short, quick sound. T, 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 same thing. Okay? So, that's how we classify consonants. Now, I did mention that we move our mouth and we use our lips and our teeth to make our sounds. Every language does, okay? In English, we're looking at the lips family where you're using your lips to form uh, as you push the air out. Sometimes we put lips and teeth together. Uh, sometimes it's just your teeth, your teeth and your tongue. And sometimes the sound comes from your throat or up in the palate, the upper palate, like under there, <laughs> in there, that part. So again, we've got continuous and short sounds in the lips family for voiced. We've got continuous and short for voiceless in the lips family. So let's look at example, compare the p, p sound and the f, f sound. So I said already, they're both the same family. or sorry, not the same family, both using lips, teeth, okay? P and F are voiceless. P is a short sound. F is a voiceless, or a long sound, continuous sound. I can keep holding that sound as long as I've got breath in my lungs. But, as you look on my screen here, P is from the lips family. You literally make the sound by pushing your lips together and forcing the air out. The V sound comes from putting your bottom lips under your top uh, two front teeth and pushing the sound out. V. Okay? All right. Next one. Hopefully that helps. So here's some of the examples in use. 
So common TH will often sound like instead of the the voiceless, we're going to get to that a little bit closer, it comes out as a S or a T. So instead of saying something, we hear our students say something, which isn't a word in English, and something, which is not a word in English, okay? So those, your listener is still going to be able to figure out what you're saying, but you're not going to sound like a natural speaker when you miss pronouncing the voiceless th sound okay the voiced th like for this comes sometimes from some students as this or dis now again those are not words so the your listener is going to say okay i think they mean this or i think they mean something it's going to sound similar and they're just going to know that you missed a sound in there or you substituted a different sound so they're still going to know what the word means when we substitute in uh, some words, we're actually making a new word. So, for example, when we put, um, when, we, when we try and say wail, which is a loud kind of crying, screaming sound, like the baby wailed all night long, I couldn't get any sleep. Baby's crying, baby's kind of, you know, loud, loud, a wail like that. If you say the V sound instead, it's going to sound like veil, which is something you put over your face to cover. A veil, like a, um, the brides wear, in Western society, brides wear a veil over their face, a lace of part of their wedding dress ensemble, right? Um, if, if you're trying to say life, but you substitute it with the voiced sound, v, you say live. Now, although those are similar, they change the meaning in the sentence. Life and live are not exactly used interchangeably. Um, for this example, P, spelled this way, P-E-A, is the little green round vegetables that we eat. They're nummy, okay? The peas, the green peas I had for supper. If you say the B sound instead of the P sound, so the voiced Instead of the voiceless, you're saying, I had green bees for supper. And bees are the insects that pollinate flowers. <laughs> They're the little white and, or not white, yellow and black insects, and they bite us sometimes. So it means something completely different. That's why pronunciation is very important. Um, here, very instead of very important. My Spanish speakers, we work on that a lot. We say, I had a very, very bad day today. You mean you had a very bad day today? Yes. So those are ones we have to pay really close attention to. So I mentioned consonant digraphs. I talked about the TH. So that's when two consonants form together to make a new single speech sound. Sometimes we have one letter go silent. Sometimes um, we hear them separately but in this case we're talking about the two of them together the th and the wh that'll make one sound now i've just included these there's a number of consonant digraphs that we can practice and we will in future ones uh future lessons but this one is the th and the wh they're kind of related and they're kind of related to the voiced and voiceless sounds that we mix up so the TH digraph produces two sounds. One that's the voiceless. Now you'll notice my red symbols here. Where am I? These red symbols, those are from the International Phonetic Alphabet, which shows us how to say the different sounds, but you have to memorize what each one of those means. You're not gonna need to know those symbols, okay? So I'm taking them out of every other place. And lots of worksheets, lots of practice, lots of schools will have those, but you don't need to memorize that. Just know that voiceless TH is the th, okay? The voiced is the th, the difference between voiceless and voiced. They're formed exactly the same way. So to make the TH sound, you put your teeth or the tip of your tongue on the bottom of your front two teeth. And you're just going to um, gently push the air out 
through your mouth, through that opening. When you've got your tongue in that way and your lips in that way and your teeth in that way, then that sound will come out. So, or th. Now I'm exaggerating sticking my tongue out a bit, right? And lots of my students will, you'll, <laughs> we don't have to stick our tongue out too far, but in order to make the sound, you have to at first. So through the mouth, you'll hear all the through the mouth. You hear two voiceless and one voiced sound in there. We've got the TH all over in your listening and reading and speaking. So I put these rules in here. If you want to kind of tune out and not listen to them, you're okay. Because it, the last one says you have to memorize. Okay, so TH is usually voiceless when it's followed by a consonant, like in throat, or if it's at the end of the word, like bath, usually. You'll notice in the next slides that's not always the case. There's always rule breakers. It is more likely to make the voiced sound when it has an E or an I behind it, like this or breathe. Okay, so you can see the I after the TH and the E after the TH. Often those are the voiced TH sound, okay? However, again, here's the caveat, the rule breaker, the what if, but... It's not always the case. So in with TH, you really have to just memorize the words when you encounter them, okay? So here's some examples. These are the words that produce the voiceless sound. So voiceless sound will have, uh, so we've got them at the beginning of words, thanks, in the middle of words, anthem, and at the end of words, math. Okay, so try and say them just a little bit before me as I say it. See if you say it, listen for the same sound. Okay, thing, thorough, thread, through, Thursday. Okay, you'll hear, and if you've got your finger on your throat at the base of your throat, you don't feel any vibration when you start those words. So our mid position author. Now you're going to hear voiced, you're going to feel voiced sounds in there, the ah uh sound and the er uh sound, but the middle th, author stops being voiced right in the middle there. Cathedral, healthful, nothing, prosthetic. Okay, and again, at the end of our words, say them just before I say them. I read that one already. Depth, length, teeth, warmth, youth. Oh, I've got a black letter in there and the rest is all green. Oh, well. Okay, so you can hear the, th, you can feel the voiceless sound. Let's look at them. We find them all over in the words that are producing the voiced sound. Okay, and you'll notice, remember I said the rules it's usually voiced when it comes before an E or an I. Well, this one comes before an A and it's voiced. This one comes before an O and it's voiced, right? Again, we're still going to just look at the words. So say them just before I do. And these ones are the voiced sounds. So you're going to feel the vibration in your throat. So we've got than, the, them. This, though, in the middle, bother, clothing, either, together, weather. At the end, usually followed by an E, but not always. See, here's one that's not. We have breathe, loathe, smooth, soothe and teeth. So hopefully you were able to make those sounds when you read them in in the list there like that. Okay. Again, exceptions, rule breakers, like I haven't said them already, okay? Some words the th makes a t sound. So the h goes silent in some words. 
but it most often occurs in proper nouns. So proper nouns are the names of people, places, or things. So you'll find names. So let me show you the example. So the River Thames, 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 Thames. I'm not British, I can't say that exactly. Uh, Thailand, we don't have Thailand or Thailand, we have Thailand. The names, the women's name, Teresa, Teresa, or the man's name, Thomas, or Tomas, it makes the t sound, okay? There's also one word, a common noun for the, the herb or the herb um, that's pronounced, pr pronounced with a T sound, and that's the thyme. You use it in your cooking of meats. Chicken you use thyme with. You put, you put the little green leaves of the beautiful smelling thyme plant into, into your recipes. And yes, it's the exact same way we say thyme on our clock. What time is it? Okay, you'll notice the spelling though is different. Again, another rule breaker. We have to be careful when T and H are actually the last letter of a, the first part of a compound word and the first letter of a compound word. So they're not the TH, the digraph together. So an example, let me look. So we've got the compound word ant hill. We've got the two words. Compound words are when two small words are put together to make a new one. Boat, house. We've got the word boat. We've got the word house. We put them together and whoa, the TH is together. But in this case, they're parts of the separate words. Okay? Light, house. Short, hand. They're put together. They're parts of the separate words, not the digraph. Okay? All right. Now we go to the digraph WH. In modern English, this digraph, the H is silent. It just says the w, w, w sound, the voiced lips family um, short sound. W, w, okay. For instance, we've got the word what, where, when, why. Which, wheel, whisper, white. We've got the white background here, okay? So that's usually how we say it most places, most dialects, okay? It's not common in modern day English. We've kind of gotten rid of it. It's kind of gotten pushed to the side. But some dialects, uh, some areas do pronounce the H just a little bit. It's good, subtly, it's almost there, almost not. So it comes through kind, but we kind of put it before the W sound. So it's not W, W, H, it's not that. It's you kind of put the H before it. So it kind of comes out with the phoneme or the sound. Okay, it's, it's, I make that sound when I'm trying to emphasize the W, the W sound. So when I'm trying to emphasize it and make it so my students can hear it, I kind of put the H sound in front of it. So, for example, what, when you try and emphasize it, it goes what, when, which, whisper, where, why, wheel, white. You can hear the subtle difference. So I say white or white. Okay, there's a subtle, tiny little bit of difference. I sure hope you can hear it on the microphone. Okay, now that being said, okay, oh, I just want to go back one little. Sometimes, especially for my students who mix up uh, the W and the V sound, I mentioned that earlier slides. Some of my students, South Asian students, will mix up the W and the V. So, for example, when they say which, it comes out as vich. Vich, vuz, I vuz, uh, which is. Okay, you get a little bit of an accent there, right? Sometimes it might help them get out of that habit of putting the dub, the V sound instead of the W if you try and do this subtle change. Which, which was, 
right? Now, was does not have the WH digraph. It just has the W sound. But if you try and emphasize it with the wh, you might get a little bit closer to the W sound instead of the V sound. Just thinking out loud on that one. Okay, the exceptions again. Again. Sometimes in some words, very common words, you're going to memorize these very quickly if you haven't already. The WH followed by an O sounds like a uh, who. So you don't hear the W at all. You just hear the H sound. Who, whole, whom, whose. So these are very common words. You're going to see them a lot. You're going to use them a lot in your speech. You're going to read them a lot. Very common. So those you'll just automatically know you get the H sound, not the wh or W. Okay. So how to practice. Okay. How to practice. I'm looking at my time. 31 minutes and I was on five minutes with we'll be here. So let's keep this lower. How to practice. Okay. We talk about this as reviewing the steps or how am I going to practice? Okay. Again, number one, listen to English everywhere you can, especially for those of us who don't um, have an outside job right now. I have one student who's actually teaching her native language to Canadian students. So she's speaking in her native language, um, not practicing her English as much, right? So we want to listen to English everywhere we can. Now, some of the things you can do to practice, well, read out loud, especially if you've got little kids. Read those English books out to them. Of course, read your native tongue books, their little stories, sh yes, but read some English books to them. Um, read out loud from your news app that you read, that you check the news on, okay? Sing English songs. These are great, especially for kids. Uh, watching English TV, kids shows are great. Um, but sing English songs. You know, when I, I think I said last video when I was on my way home to do this live session, good song came on. I was singing it out loud in my car. Nobody was hearing me. They might have saw what I was doing when they were passing me, but sing it out loud. Use the, the pronunciation from those songs. One thing you can do, too, is record yourself on your phone. You've got a little smartphone or a recording device of some, some sort. Um, record on a voice memo. See what you sound like. See if you can hear. Try, like go back to this video when it's posted. Pause it on those pages with the list. Read them out loud to yourself. Record and then listen back. See what you sound like. Okay? Practice every day. Again, going back to our very first lesson. Practice makes progress. So let's do it. Schedule a time to practice. Um, write out lists that you can read to yourself. I often tell my students, you have to be able to use this vocabulary. You have to be able to speak this in your real life situations. So if I give them a vocabulary list to learn, I want them to write out how they would use it in their life. Like write out a real sentence. What could you say? So write out some lists of all the W words you can think of, all the TH words you've seen. Search through some reading, open up a book, find, do a word hunt, find them, and then learn how to say them. Write out lists for yourself to read to yourself, read to your kids, read to your partner, practice them, okay? Um, again, <laughs> I've always had take a speaking class on the end here, but again, getting that part of your routine, I'm going to say it over and over because it's important. Uh, get that part of your routine. Schedule a time, schedule a class, schedule help from your kids if they're native speakers in elementary school or high school, even better, right? Key again, that mindset. We can do this. Be optimistic. We learned, I taught a student today about pessimistic and optimistic. Be optimistic. That's your mind saying, I can do this. Stay positive, okay? So, Again, our credits page, you've seen this before. I legally have to put it in, and I want to say thank you, Slides Carnival, for making sure I've got these nice little backgrounds for you to look at so you don't have to just see me. Um, thanks for joining us. I've kept it to 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to stop. You know our website. You know where to contact us on Facebook if you have any questions. And keep practicing. Keep positive. Hopefully, our lesson today gave you some 
tips on how to say the sounds correctly or how to practice the sounds. Have a great week. I will see you next week with some more pronunciation practice. Bye, everybody.